it's time to begin the rudimentary dry fitting of the prop shafts and it's going to be a bit of a job because i have to fit my sigma dry coupling onto the engine coupling as well and then determine the exact length now the beauty of uh, the type of shaft that i have here is that i can actually cut it should i need to slice the end off now these were made by dh porter in sydney and glenn at dh porter honestly i've never had a company that have been so easy to deal with i sent the prop bell to uh or the prop housing to glenn and within two days my shaft arrived here so they're just an amazing company to deal with and i mean these guys do all the ferries and boats and pretty much everything in australia all the shafting requirements come from them um he just honestly the service was just incredible it was like two day turnaround and i was stunned given the uh, situation with the world at the moment we're able to get trades and uh, and material supply in the works see here we've got the keyway actually machined into the prop shaft this is the nut from my brunton prop so he had all of this stuff to uh to be able to machine this correctly on a 30 millimeter shaft now they've got to be fed into here and lined up with the actual shaft itself and uh with the shaft log and the log i have up in the factory but i'm actually just going to make sure i've got the length right today and then i'm going to proceed to cut the actual stern tube, which already has a cutlass bearing in it, suited for a 30 millimeter shaft. All right, so this is gonna come back around about 50 millimeters, which is exactly what I was after. I needed 100 millimeters here before the taper of the prop bell or the actual housing of the prop, which actually is here, starts at here at the beginning of this taper. I'll go up and dry fit the Sigma drive and uh, see if I can get this coupled in and just I want to do some rudimentary measurements here particularly with uh, shaft angle which is very important as well all right so I'm gonna get in and uh, dry fit this into my engine coupling Okay, so I've got my engine coupling here. Now, it does my heading, that a marinized diesel engine from Yanmar uh, can get surface rust on, or scale on the coupling on a marinized diesel when it's sitting in a factory two kilometers from the ocean. Um, it absolutely blows my mind that that's not you know 316 stone of steel i'm not sure why i'm, I'm going to do some investigations as to why that is this should not be rusting um, i'm going to have to clean this up before i fit the coupling for good but for now i'm just going to have to fit the coupling um, what i've done on the sigma drive here is i've just got some other nuts not my nylock nuts because i intend to take these off that uh, are going to tighten onto these studs because if I put the nylock nuts on, the problem with that is I'm going to end up with having to use Loctite or something to lock this in place. And for now, I'm just doing a dry fit. So we basically fit this in place here, like so. And I'm just going to put a couple of of these uh, that's some galvanised M10 nuts that I had just to secure it in place, just for now. Now obviously I'm going to have to get feeler gauges in here to get exact alignment but the whole thing's not exactly tight I'm just trying to check for uh, the angle of the shaft firstly primarily and secondly the length. Now the second thing we have here is tapered insert instead of a keyway and how this works is that it has a small split in it and that as it's tightened physically clamps onto the shaft. So there is no physical keyway on the Brunton um, Sigma drive and then that basically fits and then that slides over the top. And as the unit's tapered, as it enters there and is tightened up, it physically tightens on the shaft with no further keyway required. And that, you know, once again, we're eliminating problems with uh, with keyway slippage and uh, and obviously wear and tear, and the movement that then is allowed within the actual sigma drive is quite substantial. I think it's up to three degrees on each side, uh, allowing for vibration and uh, obviously slight misalignment, which can happen with these things when you've got 
uh, engine mounts wearing and, uh, and obviously vibration. And this cuts down on fuel consumption, cuts down on vibration within the motor. All right, so the maximum, the maximum shaft depth into this tapered cone is essentially on my shaft is 35 millimeters. So we have marked it here at 35 mil. So that can't exceed that. And the maximum you can go to is 50 mil, but on a 30, 30 mil shaft, such as I have here, we're going to 35 mil. Now I have these small spacer blocks which we install on the on the taper cone here to ensure that I get good alignment with the shaft itself and the drive and we'll just put them in <clears throat> and we'll loosely tighten all of these now there's eight of these um, stainless bolts they're M8 and they need to go all in and the nice thing is everything's just nice and loose until you do the final fit Now building a boat has given me the advantage of being able to choose the type of stern tube, shaft, coupling and propeller system that I'm going to use in the boat and basically I started with a stern tube from Vetus Systems and this includes a cutlass bearing of around about 30 centimeters long. Now there is a stainless steel screw in that that actually holds that cutlass bearing in place and when it's in place it basically uh, gives me the opportunity to be able to adjust the angle and also to make sure that I get the correct alignment. Now it's very very important as I fit this into the boat that this is actually glued in place in the correct alignment so I'm going to take my time doing this. Right so I'm just hoping that I've got the right fit. <laughs> if I haven't I'm in trouble. This is going to go the deadwoods around about here so I'm allowed enough for the ferry. Our decision to go with the brunt and three bladed verifold propellers took some time as we originally planned to use autoprop version. But the space we had available made for a problem when the autoprop was in its reverse mode, it was cutting into the fairing. After lengthy emails with Dave Shepard from Brunton Propellers in the UK, we settled on the 20 inch Verifold version and in coming episodes I'm going to go deeper into this decision which has been one of the best decisions we've made. Uh, it was matched to the shaft size and also to our transmission which is so so important it's not just a matter of buying a prop and whacking it on the shaft there was a lot of work went into the calculations from Brunton Repellers and I thank Dave so much for his effort all right it's time to address the last hatch in our sugar scoops and Janet's made the hatches I've got to do the cutout and form a compartment in the box underneath with which to house the ladder so I've started working down there I've got to go and grind out that hole you can see down here the hatch itself is going to fit here now I've got a rather large hole here that uh, I'm going to have to fill now the ladder is actually not going to take up this whole compartment but I'll do need to do a bit of repair work just here on the bottom here to make sure that I get it cut out but for firstly I'll mark this out and cut it out and then I'll know what I'm dealing with and it'll be a box that basically houses our ladder. Now the ladder is going to slide out from here without having to open the hatch. I'll be able to swim up to the back of the boat and pull the ladder out and that's going to be nice and simple. There's a small latch on it to hold it in place in a seaway and, uh, and then I'll have to work out how I'm going to seal that bulkhead in there. So there's plenty to do. We have telescopic ladders and they have to be mounted to the underside of this hatch. Now typically they have to be mounted up underneath to a surface uh, similar to here. If I wanted to have a telescopic ladder here I'd bolt it to the bottom of here so it pulls out and drops down without having 
to open a hatch. Uh, just in case you ever fall in, you can get back to the boat. You can pull out a ladder, simply pull it out without having to unhook or unlock a hatch that might have inadvertently been locked down. So not that it's ever gonna happen, but it's well worth considering. And I don't want ladders on the back steps. I don't want that fouling. So I've actually made these hatches and they're a little bit rough here, but this is all gonna get cut out because this ladder needs to come out of the back of the hatch and deploy so i've just marked it where it finishes and it's not a very big ladder but it is a three rung ladder that goes about a meter into the water now i have to beat this hatch up to make sure that it can handle the weight of somebody climbing up on it so i'm going to put a fairly substantial lip all the way around the outside it's foam core it's got plenty of beef and uh and strength in there we might have to put another couple of layers on it but uh, this will be more than enough to uh sustain the weight that it's going to have of anyone getting up with perhaps some scuba gear on or the like, you know, weight belt or whatever. Right, so I do need to trim this area out here. I'm going to be pretty hesitant about doing it, but I do need to work out how far back this ladder needs to fit. And at this stage, I've got the right width. Um, basically, this is the width here, and this will be reinforced, this section here, because I don't want to lose this, because there's a little bit of nice detail, and it will prohibit water from getting into the hatch. I mean, there's obviously water going to get in there, but I do want to be able to clean this hatch out on a regular basis, and that's why we'll be able to lift the hatch up like so and clean out the box lower it back down again because it will be a marine growth sanctuary no doubt Hacking away at this other one, and uh, it's now ready to fit over here. So let's go and have a look. This is the basis of the insert I'm going to put into these hatches to hold this hatch in place. Um, I've decided to go for a large flat section at the back because I don't need to have the box as big and the less water in there the better as far as I'm concerned. So if I fill in this here, the hatch I didn't want to change, it was going to be too much work. But if I put in this larger flat section here, 
at the back, uh, it will be a lot less water actually into this hatch here and, and therefore a lot less cleaning, less uh, marine life. But these uh, pieces here are going to glue up underneath and then I'll get in underneath and tab it all together and then we'll start to put in the, the base of it. That could have been a hell of a lot easier. It wasn't that easy to do, uh, get it in place from underneath, but at least it's in place. And I've beveled the edges of these so that I can tab them. It'll uh, be tabbed all the way across and underneath and up to give it a lot of strength. And that lid will then sit on top of that. Um, basically, I'll just round these corners off and tidy it up a little bit. I really like the idea of not having too much of a void space here. It's only gonna be less than five centimeters deep from here but certainly very very important because it's going to form that whole basis of that ladder structure so i'm ready to do the other side over here and uh i'll get into that one this one's ready to go these bases in and I've just fabricated a box that's going to fit underneath the ladder and uh, I'll just show you over here how this is going to work before I glue it in because I forgot to film it and basically the ladder is going to be inserted or housed in this depth of box and we don't want it any deeper than it needs to be because obviously I don't want to impede on the storage within the hatch but there will be a base which is this in underneath to form a box and essentially it's only a very shallow box so any water that flows up into the ladder will just flow straight back out again it's not going to be a uh, deep enough to uh, to create any sort of surface effect inside there and uh, and ultimately it's going to be nice and solid so what I'll do is I'll just glue these uh, walls in and then this afternoon before I go home I'm going to glue the base on underneath it and uh, somehow I'll probably screw it in from underneath I'm not really sure how to suspend it and then I've got to work on blocking the back of the boat here to make sure that it's all sealed to the outside so obviously um, this is going to be the same as over here so the ledge the ledge that the ladder hatch is going to sit on is this and then underneath once again we've got these small walls and then a big base here and you'll notice I've already pre-beveled the base so that it basically makes it nice and easy to tab underneath so it'll be glassed all the way around and up underneath and makes it even more stronger than it already is. I mean that's epoxy didn't that was glued in last night, actually that was glued in this morning um, and now it's nice and solid and I'm ready to go so I'm just going to glass these in now, I'll glue the bases in and then I'll put the the uh, hatch floor in and then pretty much it's going to be weatherproof which is going to be really nice. Alright so I've got these side walls in, they were glued in about two hours ago, I just realised that I can actually clamp it from this end so I'll be able to clamp it here and here and I'll get inside and drive a couple of screws up into it and put some masking tape and the like in it just to to hold the base now the base is going to fit in like so and that's pretty much it and that's the size of my ladder box so it's not going to hold a lot of water and certainly won't hold a lot of uh, pressure from waves washing up into it Let's 
go down in here and uh, have a look what it looks like inside. Alright, so this is what it looks like from underneath. You can see I've actually beveled the edges of it to allow me to uh, tab this whole box in. I'm going to have to fill it all with those corners around there, but what I'll do is I'll drive a couple of screws in just to clean it in place for the night. Come back tomorrow, I'll be able to get sanding in there. That's a minimal little um, impact into the storage chamber and gonna give me a hell of a lot of function. Back in here. All right, so I've just ended up being a couple of bits of masking tape and I put a screw in each corner. Now it's only going with the foam, but as you can see, the whole thing's holding in place. I'm gonna put another clamp on the other end just to hold it level, but yeah, that's sealed up. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of tabbing going on in under here uh, once I get all this sanded and rounded off, and uh, that's gonna be a couple of hours inside here to tab all the inside cleats and the works and tab the deck to the actual side of the hull like I've done here on the stairs and then uh, it'll be a big day of sanding in here and then basically I can flow coat this out. Uh, however, right here, across this area here, this is actually going to be my rudder pedestal and it will be a foam core sheet all the way across here where the stem of the rudder shaft actually goes through and I will have it go all the way potentially to the top of this second step and that'll give me the access for uh, tiller control, um, manual tiller control. However, there will be an arm around about here that actually can operate here with some hydraulic pistons to drive my steering. Um, I have opted for hydraulic steering, but yeah, I've got a lot of work to do in here. Now, the other thing I need to do up along here is underneath the combing edge, this all needs to be sanded down and seriously laminated. I'm gonna be doing probably around about um, four or five layers of glass in here to beef this up and then where that cleat is going to go there there's going to be a massive piece of aluminium uh, backing behind the cleat on the outside of the boat.